Today I thought it would be fun to talk about the automatic scallop plater for the Davis vertical feed. So the instructions are here showing how you attach the automatic scallop plater. Typical sort of diagram that you have to wade your way through to figure out what it means, but I believe I have achieved this, so let's take a look. So, what it says here about the scallop plater is one has to attach and adjust the ruffler as explained on page 40, so I always love those kind of instructions because then you have to go back and look and see on page 40, but that's okay, I did that. And let's see what else we've got here. So, raise the needle bar to the highest point, place the hook which is on the end of the lever over the needle yoke nut, and fasten the plater firmly to the bed of the machine which the, with the ga gauge screw. Pass the folded material through guide Y, having the tongue in the guide within the fold, and then through the slot Z, and back under the ruffler feeding spring and needles. Then figure 49, which I showed you before, shows it correctly installed. So what I will do is show you what that actually means in relation to the fabric, and let's see. So one moment, and I'll reset the camera. So here we go. So there is the uh, monster itself, and what you can see is I've been practicing a bit to try and get this right. So what I'm going to do is remove this now um, and then we can reinstall it together. Okay, needles up and what I'll do is I'll remove this. So there's the screw and then that. Uh, right, so let me just do little snippings here so that I can remove this Okie dokie. So let's lower the needle now. Okay. So here's the beast. It's got this little hooky thing. And that hook goes over the needle bar there. So that's fairly easy to do. You need to have the foot up. And you'll see why. It's a little bit fiddly getting in there with the camera in the way, but that's okay. So you hook that over the needle bar. That's the easiest thing to do first. Although I'm not doing very well today, it's, there you go. And then what you have to do, and this is part of the adventure, is to lay this flat. Let me take this old. You have to lay this flat. So sometimes it's easier to drop the needle so that it naturally will want to lay flat. Um, and then we can line up the screw, um, which is there. And what I found is pushing it all the way over helps. And there we go. So, what I noticed about this particular delightful contraption is when I first got it, this, this bar was a bit bent. So what happened is this was raised up and it would hit the ruffler. So, you need to make sure that's good and flat so it will slide underneath the ruffler. Now you may find that it's easier to load this without um, without it being attached to the machine. It's a bit fiddly. I used some tweezers before to assist me. Let me see if I can find them again. There they are, because it just made it easier. So that's how you load it, or that's how you install it to the bed of the machine but we need to load it. So let me see if I can get you in a bit closer here so you can see the actual, there we go, that should hopefully do the job. Now what I wanted to do originally is to try and see what I can actually do in this machine. So this is fairly good quality dense cotton, which is probably a bit dense for what you would normally want. You would want lighter weight cotton. However, it works fine. It scalloped very well and it ruffled at the same time. So the setting on the stitch length, I put it around 10. That's on my machine. I can't tell you how exactly accurate this machine is, but that's why I said it. It says a medium stitch length to make it work and it absolutely works with this cotton. So this cotton 
looks beautiful like that. Not sure exactly what you do with this, maybe a baby bonnet or tablecloth or something, wedding dress. And obviously you can use silk or something, which is very nice. But let me show you what that fabric actually looked like to start with. So you have to cut this fabric, according to the instructions, an inch wide, and then fold it in the middle and press it. So it becomes half an inch, which is why I thought, hmm, I wonder if we can use half inch ribbon on this. And I'll show you that test later. So that's the fabric. You can see it's got a fold in the middle. And how you load this in, and this is where it gets very exciting, is you have to put it in through the first slot, which if you can grab it here, oop. So that's why I say this may be slightly easier to do with it not attached to the machine. Because you're trying to get this fabric. Aha, got it. It's a bit fiddly, but there you go. So that's part one. So you get it through the first thing. Then there's this sort of hook here. Um, and what you have to do is slide part of the bottom fold underneath it and then the top part over top of it so that it splits the fold. I guess it just feeds it better. And then comes the biggest challenge of all. You've got this extra slot right on the bottom. So I found this this works just sort of using, rather than the tweezers, one flat edge. So anything and then trying to shove it in the hole. And once you sort of get it fed in there, it feeds quite, there's it's fairly amount of room. Then what we have to do is pull it down and through. So there we go, got that fed. And then with the foot up, we have to put that underneath the ruffler. So I found it if you pull the ruffler back, sometimes it helps, except with the feet. The f those teeth are vicious, which is good, so it feeds it better. And then what we want to do is just get that lined up right under the ruffler. Uh, and if you lift, lift th those. So I could just start and waste the extra inch, but in this case, I'm going to try and be very conservative, pull it back. And what you want to do is make your line just the edge of the fabric so that it's a good straight pull through. So now, because I had this machine set up before, it'll just work. So let me move the camera over slightly and hook up the treadle belt and then we're off. So off we go. All being well, this will just work perfectly smoothly once we get started. So what you can see is that thing moving wildly out of the way. And then you have to watch as well up here. And I forgot to put the uh, foot down, which I'm good at doing sometimes. And then it does a bit of spinning. So sometimes you have to just tug it out the back end because of all the threads that I've got going on here. There we go. It's feeding well now. So that's just one single layer of the scalloped ruffle. So that's basically all I'm making there. So there's another option you can do here, which is to add a band on top and let it automatically stitch. So I'm going to feed that in now, one moment. Okay, so if I want to put this band on top, what I have to do is slide it through the top of that. Okay. So according to this, that's the link there. I might need to slide this down here. And if we 
I'm going to leave this folded over because I think it just will feed better rather than shaggy fabric if it'll go in there. It's a bit tight. There we are. Yeah, it goes in fine. And then we'll put it in that feed. And then what we'll do is lift the foot here. So it's sitting on top of the ruffler. And yeah, there now it's on top. And I have no idea what's going to happen here because I've never tried this before. So I, I'm kind of predicting that it's going to move that fabric all over the place. But you never know. Actually, maybe not. Although, I think it's not leaving very much scallop, so I might need to move that over a bit so the edge is more in line with the needle. So let's just fix that. Uh, yeah, I think don't use that clip for this bit and just leave it like that because it, it was too far over so you wouldn't see any scallop. There's no point in that. So let's just feed this back. And try again. Yes, that just now lines up exactly with the needle, which is probably going to give a better result. Okay. And all I have to do is make sure it doesn't creep over too much, which is it's what it's doing naturally. Oop. Better if we could keep keep this a little over more. Not sure how to do that exactly. Put my finger there or something. That keeps to the edge. Yeah, it's better if you can keep it over more. You just hold on to that and feed that manually. You can see if I do that, if I keep it fed there, And it keeps it a little more over to the edge of the needle. Okay. We're all done. Gosh, I wonder if I change this pin around. That might have actually resolved that problem for me. I think so. Because it would hold Hold the fabric more in the middle, maybe. It might be better. So, it's important to know. If I do it this way, it seems to be a little better on the ruffler. Okay, so I think that might help a bit. Not as much as I want, but that's okay. It's still very good results. It's Pull this out and take a look what we've got. So based on those settings, okay. This is the length you get from So it's just under a third. So the original length, I'm going to zoom out now, wrong way. Okay, so the original length was this, which is about a meter. It's got about a meter. And then the finished length of this is just over a foot. So it's a sort of a third. The sewing bit actually worked pretty well. So you can see I've got a nice edge there. I'm not sure exactly that's what we want, but you could easily sew that now. And it gives it, covers the edge. So if you want to do that, looks rather, rather good in fact. Hmm, okay, on to the next. So, something else I wanted to try was 
Okay, given that I'm folding over fabric and making it half an inch, what happens if I use half an inch ribbon? Although it's slightly less than half an inch this that I just found. But it this is quite thick linen ribbon. Used it one of my projects years ago and had some. And it works really well. As you can see that would give kind of a fun effect to sew straight down the middle, almost like rick rack, but much more fancy. So that's kind of neat with that heavy. Um, but I wanted to try something else, and I have not done this. And this does look like the correct width. Let's just take a look. This is 5 8. So this is exactly just slightly under half an inch, actually. Like 7 16 or something. But this is 5 8, and that should go through. That's 5.8. So this should go through here, because there was a little bit of play, spare room. And I'm feeling this should go through quite nicely. It goes through very easily, a lot easier than the other fabric. And then if we um, now feed this through the bottom. Now I haven't changed the... Letter would be better. Scissors are too slippery on this satin ribbon. Okay. Okay, got it. Pull. Marvelous. So now we've got this satin ribbon, which fits. So it does take up to five eighths of a ribbon, which is fine because it's a single layer. Then we need to load it underneath the uh, ruffler and load that in the middle now I haven't changed the needle here I think that normally with this kind of dense satin ribbon it's probably better to have a much finer needle however let's just try it for fun and see what's happening okay so let's see what happens when we off we go So the nice thing is this really does feed itself well without much intervention from me, which is quite something to see. Um, it's sewing fine and it's gathering fine. Um, wondering if we could reduce the ruffle just a touch. which way is the correct way to do this. I always get confused. Okay, I've lowered the level of ruffle, which gives quite a different effect. So we'll show you that in a sec. so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna test. So when I first started I had it quite quite heavily ruffled for the ribbon. So if you lie it flat you can see you get that. It's a, quite a nice effect. You know, that's lots of fun. Then I lowered the amount of ruffling which makes a much wider scallop. So you get that sort of effect. Much more like leaves. So you could use that easily for something if you're creating loops and circles and stuff and wanted to do sew it down. You wouldn't use white thread obviously. Um, but they're two different looks depending on how dense you want the ruffle. Both are quite acceptable. Um, and the scallop is very nice. So I think I'll 
increase this back up a bit and let's see what happens if we ruffle with the ribbon on top. So that goes there and I've got the pin the other way now. So maybe that will work a bit better. Yes, it does seem to keep it closer to the needle. Oop. Yeah, so that that clip does help keep it a little more in, I think, with the edge of the ruffler. In fact, if I move that closer, does that look better? It's a matter of experimenting, I think, to see where that should that clip should be. Oops. Yeah, that's working definitely better now. I'm not sure if I can move this in a little closer and you can see what's going on behind the needle. I'll move it over to the other side so you can see a little better. So, we got you on the other side now so you can see the ribbons here lining up with the needle which is what we want and then it's fed in here so I just need to make sure it stays in there and then the ribbon under here is all feeding itself fine so we'll see what we get out the other end. As long as that stays where it's supposed to I don't even have to be involved. So maybe just pull that over there a bit. It's more inclined to uh, Obviously, you would not want white thread to do this in reality. Um, but with a nice ribbon on top, it gives a rather delightful scallop. Let's see how? Yes, yeah, so this is very thick ribbon, so you get that effect. But I think that'd be quite spectacular, to be honest. It's a really nice scalloped ruffle under there. Very easy to do as well. No involvement for me. So you could just stitch, because there's no raw, raw edges, you could just stitch that on to anything you want. And have a really nice effect. It'd be very similar with this. So you could actually do multiple layers of different ribbon colors underneath. You have to figure out a clever way of attaching them, but you could do stuff like that to get a really neat effect with multiple ribbons. So this is a lot of fun. Works extremely well. It's one thing I do like the attachments on this day, because they really do feed well. And we'll finish the end of this ribbon. So on the back side, oop, let's put this in the camera, a little zoom. So on the back side, you can see that's heavily gathered there, it's all perfectly stitched. On the front side, we've got that scallop. So with green, matching green thread, that would be quite a good effect. And then you could stitch up here and attach it to whatever garment you wanted. It gives a really nice, nice effect. So I like that 
Yeah. So this is with cotton. And you could see if I put a, a ribbon there as well, it would give you know really good effect rather than this shaggy effect from the oh the un so you might want to overlock or do something to tidy that up and then with uh, this linen ribbon you get that effect so it creates its own type of rickrack um, but obviously if you stitch on the top you get that effect and then we did this one little test with the double but I didn't have the hook on the ribbon right so it, it, it kind of covered up that however if you use your imagination um, with it balanced right which it would be now that I've put the hook on right you would get that which is you know a really nice effect as well so that's a lot of fun now I need to find something to do with that. I'm sure I will. Bye for now.